Good morning. Uh, we are going to bring the March 3rd meeting to the Board of Supervisors. We're opening it now. Hey, Jeremy. Addressing the board, please state your name for the record and address the board as a whole through the chair. No action or discussion will be conducted on matters not listed on the agenda. However, the chair may refer the subject matter to the appropriate department for follow-up, schedule the matter on a subsequent board agenda. Public comment? Good morning, my name is Ricardo Spoobel. Um, I just wanted to give a quick update on the Golden Age Center. So we had a recent fundraiser, uh, Spaghetti Feed. We raised $2,600 um, and we had over 200 guests. We had 20 volunteers, so we did, a, I think, a pretty good job for our first fundraiser. Next fundraiser will be Cinco de Mayo. Um, I hope you all can attend. And uh, we'll be, sometime this year, we'll be doing Prime Rib. Um, maybe some other games and bingo, things like that, bringing back some awareness to the center. So, just wanted to give a quick update on that. Thank you. Hope to see you all there. Okay, so that's good My name is Jim Stuhl. I'm out of Hayport, California. I'd like to reread uh, parts of the Constitution, the state of California, the spring law of the land, uh, of California here anyway, I don't know about other states, but uh, Article Ballot Measure Application, Section 7.5, a city or county measure proposed by the legislative body of a city, charter city, county, charter county, and submitted to the voters for approval may not do either of the following. May not do either of the following. Include or enclose include or exclude any part of the city, charter city, county, or charter county from the application of the effect of provisions based upon approval or disapproval of the city or county or based upon the casting of a specified percentage of votes in favor of the major by the electors of the city, charter county, Charter County or other part thereof contain alternate or commutative uh, provisions where one or more of these provisions would become law depending upon the casting of a specified percentage of votes for or against me. A, a uh, City county measure as used in this section means an uh, uh, advisory question, proposed charter or charter amendment, ordinance proposition, insurance of a bond or other question proposition submitted to the voters of the city or voters of the county election held throughout the entire single cal county. The uh, hospital measure that that you supported and passed uh, to this fraud, forgery, extortion uh, of, of the California Constitution against the citizens of Trinity County. Not all the citizens, the citizens of the PUD district. The article section 11, 11A, private control of county and municipal functions, deposit of and investment of public monies. The legislature may not delegate to a private person or body power to make, control, appropriate, supervise, or interfere with county or municipal corporations, improvements, money, or property, or to 
levy taxes or assessments or perform municipal functions. And yet you're doing this. You're, you're, you're not doing my... Yes, sir. That's your time. My time's up? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Jim. I want to get this put on the agenda so I get got more time to explain some different articles in this Constitution. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, Supervisors, and Staff. John Brower from Junction City. Uh, <clears throat> I just want to encourage uh, supervisors and staff to work with the HR department uh, to find creative ways of uh, hiring and keeping these highly skilled folks from our uh, cannabis permitting division of our planning department. Uh, these aren't normal counter clerk type uh, jobs and responsibilities. They might look like it on the surface. But uh, these are highly skilled people that, that uh, uh, within a year or so of being on the job, um, uh, become intimate with the fast-changing landscape of cannabis permitting. They live through every little stress and drama that comes to their front counter or over the phone. Um, these are highly valued positions that really should be receiving some sort of danger pay or, or, or some method of, of offering bonuses or or something, uh, some means of recognizing it as other than, than just a normal uh, uh, clerk job at a counter. Um, so uh, I encourage some sort of creative solutions to that uh, in the very near future as you can. Thank you. Hi, Everett Harvey Weaverville. First find is kudos to Ricardo for organizing and pulling off the fundraiser for the Golden Age Center. That was quite fast and quite well done. Um, I had some other things. Sorry, can't remember about that. <laughs> Thanks. Groves Training Center. Um, I wanted to bring a, attention to the board a issue from our, our Coupa compliance. Many years ago, the county, uh, in a stand against the state, said if you're going to mandate a Coupa, then you guys can do it yourself. Um, so as of today, there's still only two counties in the state that the state looks over themselves. When this program started, uh, my fees for my business were about $150 a year. This year they were just raised to $500 a year. Uh, and every business in Trinity County is supposed to have this license, including all 315 uh, grow growers. This, the Coupa program, for those that don't know, is about toxic storage of toxic uh, chemicals. So I have to pay $290 a year to send in a worksheet that says I have no toxic chemicals. Um, and so I would encourage the county to get into this program. If we have roughly 800 businesses, that's $400,000 worth of income. I'm sure we can afford to bring a person on to bring the rates down. And uh, thank you for your time. Any more public comments? Not saying any. We're going to go on. Oh, sorry. I'm, sorry excuse about me. That. I came up with Jeremiah Johnson City. How many businesses do we have? <clears throat> That's what that brought that up because we didn't have a clue. How many businesses do we have? Well, actually, this time is for yeah. your public comments. Oh, sorry. That was a, I don't. Um, okay. Yeah, I just uh, that was kind of a question. Not knowing how many businesses we have, that was a little bit. I'd inform you enough, so thank you. Okay, and go Michael Blackwell, we fell. Um, I just wanted to take a moment. Uh, we know after today things are going to change some. And I just wanted to, uh, I know not, not everybody's always see eye to eye and everything, but I just wanted to thank 
as the Hipoda Shelter Service, no matter what you're doing, and also continue to support the senior center. Okay. Going once, going twice. Closing public comment. <laughs> we are going to move on to presentations. Um, item 1.1, receive a presentation from Pacific Forest Trust Project Manager Jill Harris regarding the Healthy Watersheds Initiative, no fiscal impact. Welcome, Jill. To the chair and the board, thank you very much for giving me the time to uh, present to you today. Uh, as said, my name is Jill Harris. I am the project manager for Healthy Watersheds California, which is um, a part of Pacific Forest Trust. I started with Pacific Forest Trust back in June of 2019, um, and my role with the organization is to do regional outreach and communication for this particular project, as well as for the organization as a whole. Uh, Pacific Forest Trust is headquartered in San Francisco. Um, we have satellite offices in Sacramento, Portland, and now in Mount Shasta. I myself am from um, Wairika. I've lived in Siskiyou County for a little over 20 years now. And I'm just very happy to be here. I spent most of my career in community development and public relations. <laughs> I never... Uh, much luck with these clickers. <laughs> so uh, the mission of Pacific Forest Trust is to sustain America's forests for their public benefits of wood, water, wildlife, and people's well-being in cooperation with landowners and communities. And we do this by conserving working forests um, and retaining their important role in rural economies, as well as protecting wildlife and um, helping to make our forests more resilient in the face of and the threat of um, wildfires, as we are all aware. So throughout the state um, of California and some in Oregon, we currently have 32 working forest conservation <coughs> easements. Um, PFT was actually uh, established in California in 1993 in the small town of Boonville in Mendocino County. Um, the working forest conservation easement is a concept that uh, Pacific Forest Trust actually helped to create and establish in the state of California. And essentially what this is, is a way for us to create economic incentives to reward private forest owners for conserving their lands and practicing sustainable forestry. So it's important to note that all of these lands that are under these working forest conservation easements are still harvesting trees um, and still contributing to the local economy and jobs. We hold easements on about 108,000 acres throughout um, California and Oregon. Um, and we work with companies such as um, Shasta Cascade, which is formerly Roseburg, uh, Bascom, Michi uh, Michigan California Timber Company, and others as well. So when we look at the state of California, if you look at that green area circled up at the top, that's the Klamath Cascade region. Within this region, we have five key source watersheds that feed the Shasta, Trinity, and Oroville dams. Um, the Upper Trinity, the Upper Sack, the McLeod, the Pit, and the Feather. Um, so you see the red line um, going down to the southern part of the state, and that of course represents the gray infrastructure, which is essentially the state's water delivery system. Um, and up top, where we are, we have the green and the blue, which is the source of all of this water, and represents the watersheds that we are working to protect. Um, so what we know historically is that these uh, watersheds, they play a very critical role in the state's water supply, but they've not been funded as part of the state's water system. So the problem that we're addressing through this initiative is a lack of focus and funding at the state level for natural water infrastructure. Um, Pacific Forest Trust has worked um, over the years, um, going back to 2016 with the passage of Assembly Bill 2480, which incorporated watersheds into the state's legal definition of water infrastructure. 
therefore making them eligible for funding and financing very similar to that of grade infrastructure. Um, following that up with Assembly Bill 2551, it specifically designated that region on the slide before, the Climate Cascade region, as a region for focusing state restoration and conservation efforts on watersheds. And then just recently, um, at the end of February, um, we have a new Assembly Bill introduced, Assembly Bill 2693, that will work towards creating an actual mechanism for implementing um, restoration and conservation efforts in this region. So under the legislation, if we go back to 2480, there's five essential actions that are eligible for state funding. Um, and that, those include vegetation management, meadow restoration, stream channel restoration, road and trail upgrades or decommissioning, and preserving watershed integrity. Um, so just a few slides here, just showing some examples of um, those activities. Um, this is meant to demonstrate vegetation management. Um, when you do this, you get a um, more multi-story forest canopy, which allows the snow to actually make it all the way to the ground, um, and it allows it to, less is lost in, um, to evaporation, more is stored in the soil, um, basically increasing the size of your sponge. This also, what's really important to um, us, it increases the, um, the resiliency to wildfire and also helps in terms of actually fighting wildfire. It makes it easier to get in and, um, and to fight those fires, reducing the cost of the firefighting. Um, restoring degraded streams, just an example before and after there of what your stream beds um, look like. Um, with these conservation, um, it improves overall water quality, quantity, and habitat around. Restoring wet meadows, um, sort of similar before and after photos. What we know is that wet meadows are the best place for groundwater storage and recharge. They significantly help in flood control because they increase the ground's ability to hold water longer um, and slow the flow down. And that's also important for allowing flows to go longer and the water to remain colder into the summer months, which is important for downstream users, agriculture, and wildlife. Reducing sediment delivery greatly increases the overall water, excuse me, water quality um, and improves the riparian habitat around those streams. When we talk about keeping watersheds whole, and this is a key place where land trusts like um, Pacific Forest Trust come into play, um, we're talking about boundary lines. So you have private property boundary lines and potential um, development encroaching on, on property, whether it's private or public. Um, and maintaining watershed integrity basically means that we can um, implement conservation practices across boundary lines so that entire watersheds are managed for overall health. So again, pointing out the five key watersheds that we talked about um, within this Climate Cascade region. And you can see um, within the, across this region, um, we have a great deal of public land. It is 62% publicly owned, mostly U.S. Forest Service, some BLM. Uh, 32 or 38 percent privately owned and it creates a bit of a challenge when we talk about land management practices and uh, implementing conservation efforts and then walking up to the boundary line and we're going to stop here so what we're seeking to do with this initiative is to create a mechanism where we can implement conservation practices <coughs> across those property lines and keeping these um, watersheds and forests um, in better health This table, which I think you can see better probably um, on your screen, but it basically identifies uh, different conservation and, me and restoration methods um, by acreage in each watershed that we're proposing. This data came from a risk assessment that we completed in 2017. Um, so it's, it was the best available data at the time, certainly would probably need to be updated some. 
Um, what we want to point out is that we are proposing this as a multi-benefit landscape scale initiative. Um, the scale of need, which is exemplified here, is across 7 million acres. Um, so it needs to be matched with long-term continual funding from the state. And something that we know is really important to our rural economies who um, have um, been struggling for quite some time with the loss of the timber economy um, is that this type of project and initiative would support somewhere in the neighborhood of 6,000 jobs per year if we um, estimate that the work would be completed over 10 years. And we know that it would take lots longer. Um, but for the purposes of this analysis, we um, use 10, 10 years. And I do have some um, notes I'll give you. Um, they go into this in a little bit more detail. Um, if you think about this in terms of an infrastructure project, it represents the largest potential investment in this region um, in, in years. Um, and if we can implement it and complete it on the scale that we are proposing, it potentially recreates that forest economy, reestablishing a base economy that, that will then um, support other economies throughout the region, everything from retail to tourism to recreation. So again, comparing uh, restoring natural infrastructure to gray infrastructure, investment in watersheds is the only infrastructure project that actually will increase inflow into our reservoirs, um, along with all of the other multiple benefits of flood protection, fire resiliency, job creation, wildlife, um, habitat. I will hand this out to you because I realize this is hard to see. This is a fact sheet on the Assembly Bill 2693 that was just introduced um, in Sacramento and is being uh, shopped around, if you will. Um, we want to make clear that there's no funding associated with this bill, although the goal is to establish um, an office within the Water um, Quality Control Board. Um, to administer um, and provide a, a system for administering uh, state bond funds, federal water funds, and both state and forest um, health funds. We want to make sure that people understand that we do not um, want to affect or constrain any existing agency's um, authority. Um, but we do want to help create a mechanism for coordinating and collaborating collaborating across agencies, land managers, landowners, public and private. Um, and we're simply suggesting the Regional Water Quality Control Board at this time because they have jurisdiction across state and federal lands, um, and they have expertise and experience with large funding programs. So just a cute photo of everybody who wins. <laughs> of the, um, if we're able to implement and uh, achieve this level of restoration work. Um, we estimate that if we can do this, we would um, conserve or restore 75 to 85 percent of the watersheds across this region. If we're able to, um, so if you go back to the, the table earlier of the restoration activities that are proposed across the 7 million acres, um, if we're able to achieve this level, um, we would restore 75 to 85 percent of the forests and watersheds throughout the region. And so that's essentially it. Um, I'm happy to take any questions um, from the board. And I do have some information for you as well. Yeah, so thank you for coming. Of course. Just so everybody knows, she has come and met with me because the restoration I think is virtually all in District 1. Um, you talked about 70% uh, of the watersheds would be restored uh, in this model. How much water, do you have any idea how much more water that would bring into the reservoirs? Or is that an impossible number? Um, you. <coughs> so, go back to page 15. Yeah. So it, it, it 
represents an inflow increase of 450,000 acre feet per year. Um, and there is a complete um, copy of the risk assessment that has all of this data in it um, on our website as well. I'm happy to, to forward a link if that's helpful. Um, but the, it's it's quite a it's quite a book with a lot of data. Um, and, and so the funding, I'm a little, since you're not asking, or they're not asking for any funding in this, it's just to coordinate all the fundings from the different area and for this area to get its piece of the pie, basically? Correct. Correct. And how much money is out there available? So that's, I mean, that's a great question. And we know that the state has really focused a lot of money in the last, you know, let's just say five years um, in, in response to or reacting to the wildfire impacts that we've experienced. Um, so there's certainly funding available and we know that. We just want it to be implemented um, in a more collaborative way and a more sustained way. The goal is to have it set up in such a way that um, these activities are prioritized across the regions and across the communities and the existing um, agencies, uh, fire safe councils, watershed restoration groups, so that they, they basically have um, a list of priority projects that they can um, lay out and plan for on a yearly basis with the knowledge that the funding is, is there and is ongoing and continuing to come in. So a little bit different than um, finding a project going through the permitting process, presenting your project, waiting for a grant to be funded or not funded, reapplying, maybe getting the work done this year, maybe getting it done next, next year. It's just, it's really, the goal is to streamline it and to be able to maintain it over time so that the work can have the greatest effect and impact. And this project, this work will offer additional water, obviously, since you'll be creating additional water to transport down to Southern California or the rest of the state to alleviate the drying up of, of other areas or Colorado or, or other things. Is, is that one of the goals of, of the, this? Yes, it is It is to achieve overall water security for for the state of California. I mean, we, we recognize that we are the top of the tap. Right. Okay. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. So, go ahead. So, so for example, in my district we have tailings that the mines came at. They used to be meadows. Those would be in a program somehow that those could get on the list and be converted back into meadows and water storage. Yes. So, and then my last question, what do you want us to do? So what we are hoping for is for boards of supervisors to um, we would ultimately we would love a letter of support um, for this initiative that we could carry to Sacramento. If you would write the letter and um, send it to your representatives, your assemblymen, and your senator, um, that would be helpful as well. Um, but in general, again, it's, this is outreach and communication. So as Pacific Forest Trust, and we are have been actively working in these communities for 26 years now. We want to make sure that you're aware of what we're doing at the state level and have an understanding of, of how this will potentially affect your communities in, in the years to come. So um, general support, of course, and then if you're able to write a letter and, and pass it on to the, the folks that have influence in Sacramento, that would be most helpful. So it is multi jurisdiction as you talked about and it's also affecting um, public and private and you brought up the water control board mm -hmm. as being the um, sounds like the person or the entity at the top level how will this impact individuals that have we have a lot of people that do agriculture and they have wells mm -hmm. um, there's not a lot of uh, water that is provided to farms that is through you know what we would call municipal. So with, how would that affect the individual landowner, um, whether they're growing hay or anything else? 
do they, are there going to be additional monitoring? It's not meant to interfere or um, overlap with any current um, program or activity that's administered by the Water Board. It's just um, what we see as potential, and it, it could change, to be quite honest. It's just in our proposal that they are the entity that if an office were to be established to administer this program, they are the entity with um, jurisdiction across those, across those boundary lines. Um, so again, though, it's meant to be its own separate um, program and not to interfere and also not, to meant, not meant to create any additional regulation. It's simply, it's simply a program for administering funding for these projects to be, to be done. And on that note, how do you see the funding um, coming into the program? So our goal, of course, is to um, hopefully get some bond funding that would be allocated for it. We know that the state will propose another bond um, this year. And then in addition to that, um, there's other, you know, there's other funds at the state level that are currently going towards restoration and conservation work. And the goal is to just have those funds um, allocated and streamlined specifically for these efforts over time. So talk about forest health funding. Um, you know, I mean, there's um, GGRF funds right now. There's there's certain funds that are already being allocated for for restoration and conservation work, and we're just asking for them to be streamlined and sustained. On the jobs that you see, the potential jobs of the <coughs> program, um, are, are, do you see those as uh, local? jobs within each jurisdiction. Yeah, so our, our goal is to work with um, the workforce development agencies throughout the region, the Economic Development Councils, the local junior colleges. Shasta College is a great example of one that's got a little bit of a head start on this with their first seat program that they're doing now. Um, but that that is the goal, is to create, create local jobs and to help our communities to um, keep our kids <laughs> Um, or, you know, to train them and, and to be able to have sustainable, good-paying jobs in our communities. So, um, have you reached out to RCRC? And so? Yes, we've yeah. met um, with RCRC a couple times. Um, in Sacramento, um, both Greg Norton and Barbara Hayes um, are aware of this project, and um, we're, we're still talking with them because we know that they're working on some similar um, projects, and so we're trying to find ways to, you know, collaborate, coordinate, support each other, leverage resources. I'd ask if you have a sample letter that perhaps you can direct it to our CAO. And then I'm going to go ahead and open this up to the public um, for the input, but I'll remind the public that the board can't answer your questions. So, um, board, if there's a specific question that a public member um, you want to follow up, please uh, be the one to ask. Thank you. So we're going to go ahead and open this up to the public comment on this. If there's any one. Yeah, Daryl Ford of Weaverville. Um, I have wondered for years why the entities that benefit from the water that we send down south aren't willing and don't pay for helping restore the watersheds where the water is coming from. So to me, talking about state funding and whatnot is fine, but I think that the Westlands and the Bay Area water districts and stuff that benefit from our water should be more than willing to help pay for restoration of the watersheds to preserve the water that they need to survive. I mean, basically, these kind of dollars, if that creates that kind of water, some of it's going to go to them for sure, and they need it probably as bad as anybody does. So it seems to me like those folks that have those water rights should be contributing to the maintenance of the watersheds uh, where the water is generated. Thank you. And thank you guys for having me. Great uh, presentation. I just had a few questions for you. Could you go back a little bit, a couple slides there, if you could? Uh, right there. Where did you get those facts from? So, who, who gave you those? In 2017, we completed a risk assessment. Pacific, the staff at Pacific Forest Trust, along with a team of um, scientists, 
um, completed a risk assessment of the 7 million acres and the five watersheds um, and broke it down um, with the best available data that we had to identify those particular restoration activities by acre, by watershed. Um, and that risk assessment is available on our website. Um, and you can go through and see that, you know, <coughs> who did the work. Yeah. Thank you. I do agree with Daryl. The Westlands Water District is the largest water district, I think, in the United States. I think they bear some uh, the cost of this, absolutely. Uh, of the 6,000 jobs uh, that you're talking about this year coming up, how many of them are in Trinity County? Did you know? I don't know the breakdown by county. No, that would be that would be across the region. So across the, there's actually eight counties um, that that go throughout this region of the five watersheds. Okay. Um, you said a savings of 400 or an additional 452,000 acre feet of water, um, which is a general normal year flow that uh, is released down the Trinity River for the entire year. Um, do you know how much water, uh, I know you're talking about Shasta, most of the, uh, the runoff there seems to come from four um, places that will feed the Shasta Lake and one from the Upper Trinity, which really has very limited um, water restoration creeks that then without it in the upper cycle for very large streams. Of that 452,000 acre feet, how much um, will be coming into Trinity Lake? Do you know? I do not know. And that's a that's an inflow increase into, um, I, I believe it's inflow increase into Shasta and Oroville combined. Okay. Uh, not Trinity at all, to Shasta Oroville? Because <laughs> we're, we're counting what comes into Trinity as what ends up in Shasta, if that does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, I know, yeah. I know how the water system works, but it'd be nice if we could save some or get some extra water into Trinity, uh, besides Shasta and Orville. Um, you had another slide up there. I think it had to do with, um, can you go to the next slide if possible? We're out of time. Uh, you can skip that one. So one of them says, uh, what you're saying, sorry. So what we'll do, perhaps there's more interest, so um, shortly we'll take a break, and if you don't mind sticking around to, to interact with the individuals, sure. based on the questions that you heard, was there any follow-up? Gentlemen? No? I want to say thank you very much, Joe, and Neil, if you want to stick around, we'll, we'll take a break shortly, not not right away, but shortly, and then anybody you else who wants, of course. Thank you. Is there any more public comment? Well, thank you very much, Jill. We look forward to seeing that um, and South Carolina letter. Okay, yes, for sure. Thank you. So we'll move on to consent calendar. These items include routine, non controversial matters and will be acted upon by the board by one roll call motion. A member of the board, staff, or public may request an item be pulled and considered separately. Public? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board. I'll move to uh, support. One second. Supervisor Brown? Aye. Supervisor Gross? Aye. Supervisor Gross? Aye. Supervisor Chow? Aye. Why don't we take a 10 minute break now and that way Bill doesn't have to wait too long. Thank you. Right, yes, yes, yes. Okay, we're going to bring it back to the board meeting and we are at reports and announcements. Any reports from department heads? Yay! Hello, good morning. Can 
Hunter, Building and Planning Director. I just want to provide an update on the housing element this morning. Um, so the draft was reviewed by the Department of Housing and Community Development. We had an excellent review, uh, only a few minor changes. Uh, so that copy is posted now online on the Planning Department website for review. If anybody would like to look at it. Um, we will be having a special meeting with the Planning Commission on March 19th, so they can review it. And then uh, hopefully turn it around and have a review by the board that next week. Um, uh, because we are trying to meet deadlines for uh, quite a bit of funding that's on the line without having a housing on the lines. Any questions? I know this was a timing issue and I really appreciate it. I know that um, there are millions literally writing on this, so kudos under the pressure that you have. So um, thank everybody that participated and, and working for it. So. Yes, and, and I want to implicate um, Susie. Implicate. <laughs> <laughs> Is that really the word you want to use? <laughs> no, no I, I want to thank, you know, specifically thank Susie. Um, yeah, she was a, a she with great assistance. We have two Susies. This was Susie uh, Kukums, okay. um, our, our grant coordinator. Um, she was a tremendous help and, and kept pushing and keeping things going when with uh, everything that's going on, we might have been dropped. So I, I do want to thank her. I'll make sure and she gets that. I'll, 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 I'll make sure she gets both messages. Yes. So. Thank you. Any comment from the public? <coughs> Thank you. I never know what you'll, what you'll start there. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Kim. Any other department heads that want to report out? Okay, I see heads shaking now, so that must be a good sign. Dr. Kent? Nothing to report, thank you. Members of the board? No out of county travel, District 5. No out of county travel for me. We do have. Um, some RCRC annual report I'd like to share a little bit of information with um, some of the key things from last year. Um, Assembly Bill 1810, uh, RCRC was a leading supporter of that bill and that allows uh, money from the state motor fuel tax to be spent at discretion of the supervisors for each county on the maintenance of cow guards um, on public right of ways. So that's a new thing. Um, the RCRC supported um, the HR Bill 1595, which was for uh, cannabis banking. So that's cleared the House, and it is awaiting uh, action in the Senate. Um, the PILP program for 2019, the money for that, and um, two-year reauthorization of the Secure Rural Schools program, um, that passed. and. I think it is $644,000 for the book program that's going to be coming in over the next year. Um, some stuff from the governor's uh, state budget. Um, $1.3 billion in cap and trade revenues for greenhouse gas reduction programs. Um, part of that is $200 million in forest health and wildfire prevention projects. Um, 25 million for organic diversions programs. Um, that's kind of like what the Golden uh, State Resource is doing with the biomass removal. Um, 300 million for disaster preparedness. Um, 75 million for Cal OES. Um, of that, 75 million, the funding will be uh, open for establishing community centers with backup power, and air conditioning, and heating. So I know the different areas have been working on establishing uh, defined community centers in the different communities, and this will be a funding tool that hopefully we can utilize. A um, couple other key things. Um, RCRC was a big supporter of revising the NEPA, um, so the Forest Service will hopefully utilize categorical exclusions um, to speed up processes on forest lands. Um, by 2025, um, 
75% of organic waste is going to have to be diverted from landfills. I'm not sure if that's really going to affect us so much, but I'm sure it will be a ripple effect. Um, the Cannabis Appalachians Program has been supported by RCRC, and they've been a big participant in the state's forming of it, which is essentially identifies little regions um, to be kind of certified um, in their uh, local specifics environment that makes um, cannabis unique to that origin. And the rules should be coming out this year for that program. Um, the homeowner's insurance, there's an ad hoc committee within RCRC, and by the August of this year, they're supposed to kind of share their recommendations and their findings as far as trying to keep insurance companies from raising the, rent, the, the rates and everything. And um, that's pretty much it from the annual report. Um, if anyone has more questions, detailed questions, I'm happy to answer it, um, look into it. Um, otherwise, there is no out of county travel warning. Is there um, where the public may access that? Uh, I'm sure on the website. Our website, you have the annual report. Yeah. So, um, as far as myself, um, February 20th, we went down to Reading and um, had our economic development meeting. Trinity County has had been lacking um, uh, a couple people on the board. And I'm happy to say that John Woodhouse, who is the manager of the Mbaugh Bank here locally in Weaverville, um, volunteered and was uh, approved and um, accepted. Uh, his nomination was accepted. And so we still have one person um, that is lacking from Trinity County. And uh, we have we a have potential in that. So that will be the first time in um, I think they said like 12 years that if, if we get the second person, we'll have a full Trinity County showing of people. So um, it, it's the manager of Umpa from Woodland to Northern California who is right now um, the secondary application. So uh, on 225, we had a stakeholders meeting. Um, it, we also had Bob Nash from the local economic development come in once every periodically they have to do an update and it just so happened that all the stakeholders were already going to be meeting on that day and so he got a lot of input um, they'll be doing this with several of the other counties that uh, we participate with and then coming back with a report and at that time it'll be made for the public and then on um, February 27th the fire safe council um, we have been awarded through uh, different grants programs, both with the watershed and um, the RCD, several uh, different programs. And so I've asked Dylan with the watershed to come in probably April and give us a presentation of all the different programs that we have been awarded. So pretty much wraps it up for that. So go, moving on to the reports from, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, so last week I was in Washington, D.C. Uh, the public utilities here uh, invited me along to go to Public Power Week. Uh, we had three days of meetings around Washington um, with different agencies. Uh, a big topic for TPUD and the county is the right of -ways. Letter that we gave to help expand the width of the power of rideways. Uh, they seem to be getting some uh, real good traction there, high up in the Forest Service. Um, another issue we talked about was the Wilderness Bill, and I'll give uh, a little update on that on our ad hoc uh, where that's going. Uh, we talked about recreational funding for the Forest Service. Unfortunately, under the, the fixed bill that they have to fund fire, um, they, they did fix that, but they have not increased any money or taken the money back to where it was 15 years ago for recreation. So the Forest Service at this point doesn't believe that there's any, going to be any major change in the quality of recreation. 
insufficient funding or quality of the campgrounds um, in basically the whole western United States. Um, those were the highlights of what I talked about on the county mission. Now, now we'll move on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Report from ad hoc committees of federal lands legislation. Um, so I'll go ahead and start. Um, as you read in the paper that it passed the House and went to the Senate, um, Congressman Huffman's very happy about that. Uh, in the Senate, we met with uh, Kamala Harris staff uh, on this issue. Um, she seems to be taking the lead on it from the Senate side for the California Senate. I, I appreciate their candor out of their office. They basically said they didn't, uh, no matter what the Trinity County supervisors or Trinity County felt, they would not change their vote on how they're going to vote and they're going to support this. Uh, but in uh, Diane Feinstein's office, there was a little different tone. They are in support of the bill that they want to see um, our list of changes we'd like to see in it, and they would like to have us make a stand on that sooner than later. So uh, Jeremy and I will meet here very quickly to come up with a list of uh, changes and then present it to the board to see if that's the board's wishes to move on from this. But this needs to be done within the next month. Hearing legislation. Thank you. And then, uh, and then, of course, we don't know what the Trump administration, if they had signed it, but if it was attached to the right thing, I'm sure they would sign it. But they're not a, the Trump administration is not a fan of expanding the wilderness at this time. So that's where we're at. Um, and then, Jeremy, anything more? Dr. Kinsta, Jeff, but um, I agree with Jeremy that um, the numbers in regard to the maps. And so um, if, if we're not going to get them, they've done a lot of the work. Perhaps you guys can meet with Ms. Millian and at least they've got some real good uh, coverage. And so, Dr. Kins, excuse me, if, do you, have you looked at the cost of the maps regarding the Wilderness Act that I afford you from the area? I have it. So perhaps, um, it sounds like this is time, um, we have approximately 30 days. Yeah. It sounds like we did a public hearing, and so um, a suggestion that maybe if, if we're not going to have the maps in time, that um, Supervisor Brown and Supervisor Gross can meet with Amelia RCD and at least look and, um, and, and see on a better map. What's going on, so. And again, each supervisor is in my scheme of getting public lands transferred along with this. If, if that's what we want to do, if we just want to do a hard no or, or a hard yes, I don't know. That if there's lands in your district of that, that you feel that you should transfer to the county, be part of this. So, do you want to explain what CUPA is real quick? A certified unified uh, protection agency. So that's the lead agency over over the toxic waste reporting in, in California. Certified. Certified unified. It's just one of the 462 agencies in California that want a piece of the pie. Okay. So, moving on to county matters. These items include non-routine or controversial matters and are listed alphabetically by department. A member of the board or staff may request that an item be heard out of order. There's four items as a board Choose. Leave it where it is. Okay. So, item 4.1. Pursuant to the county fee waiver policy, 
found, find that the U.S. Census provides a benefit to the public and it is not for the purpose of fundraising and approve the U.S. Census application for waiver of county fees, waiving building rental and deposit fees in the amount of $2,765.75, potential loss of revenue to the General Services Department in the amount of $2,765.75. Just a, a request for a fee waiver for the, uh, the events hall by the uh, U.S. Census, and we do find that it's a criteria for um, the application and the waiver. Okay, this is for the veterans hall. What part are they going to use? Do that, but it's probably going to be a large portion of it because it's been ongoing. But upstairs or down in the basement? I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Bringing it back to the board. Second. <laughs> second. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll. Discussion. Second, second, second. Discussion. Yeah, I. I'm not quite sure why we would be doing this. You know, when the Forest Service comes in and uses our airports, they pay us to use our airports, and you can't argue that that's not a benefit to the, to the area. And I'm not arguing for them. I'm just saying it meets the criteria for us to do the fee waiver because it is a benefit, direct benefit to the community because as we, the more accurate census we have, uh, it, it, it allows us to yeah. have qualifies us for more funding. So it's, I well, obviously yeah. don't have a opinion that I think that this is the right idea. I am one who supports that, that uh, we, are, we are a pay for service organization which we pay for what we do. But I can't deny it from uh, from application standpoint. I do have to bring it to the board. Okay, so if they find less people, then we actually purchase it. Correct. <laughs> I, I don't know, I'm just not, anyway. So if we don't help them do their job, we might lose some revenue. Well, their constitutional duty is to do their job. I know, and, and not. unfortunately, I noticed one of the last items we waived was for uh, not was for raising uh, uh, raising funds, which we probably should have taken up. A look at. I, I would approve this item. I'm in support of this item. I think the census is very important, and I'm sure the government would. I'm sure the federal government would bend over backwards to to help us do anything we want. And Keith, I'm being so sarcastic. It's beyond. Yeah. <laughs> it's just beyond. I'm giving you an opening here. To, well, no, I just would say that they have an organization that's funded by billions of dollars, and, mm -hmm. and so I don't know if they go into Los Angeles County and get free rent or whatever. I'm not against the census. The census is a great thing, but I just, every agency that comes in wants to use our stuff for free, but we have to fix the roof on it. Everyone wants to use it for free. It makes, it makes me nuts. And, and so when you have a difference of a local group that's selling pies to raise money, that's a little different than the federal government. Has the government ever um, filled out the fee waiver application and turned it in for airport usage or anything like that? No, they're, they pay. It's in their interest to, to pay or in their guidelines to pay. I'm just one person. I, I'm trying to figure out, you know, where would they get the money to pay it? How? I, I agree with you, Keith. I, I'm not arguing. I think it's hilarious that the federal government isn't able to fund their census. I know. Doesn't point seem to want to fund their census. Point of order. Yeah. My question is, um, are they going to use this building for one day or are they going to use it for a year 
Because we're going to lose revenue if they use it. No, that's but that's something you guys need to discuss. So, bringing you back to board and continuing the discussion, there was a motion and a second, I believe. Was there? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. You seconded. Okay. Call for the question. Do you mind? No. Okay. I just said my piece. I would. I Supervisor Benwich? Yes. Aye. Supervisor Brown? Aye. Supervisor Rose? No. Supervisor Chapman? Aye. Item 4.2. Accept retirement of Letty Gaza, effective March 1st, 2020, and appoint Elizabeth Hamilton, Interim Director of Health and Human Services, effective March 1, 2020, approximate cost and salary and benefits per month for the Deputy Director of Health and Human Services at A step is $12,104 and the Interim Director at A step is $15,538. Welcome, Shelley. Thank you. Good morning. Shelley Nelson, HR Director. Uh, Letty Garza had announced her retirement as the Director of Health and Human Services, which was effective March 1st. Um, we feel it's important that we designate an interim director to lead the department during the recruitment process, which could possibly take a couple months. Ms. Hamilton has served as the department's deputy director since January 2016. She's held program manager and supervisor roles since April 2013 and has worked for the same department since April 2007. She has indicated her willingness to serve in this capacity. The Health and Human Services Director of Recruitment did begin back in January 2020, and we are in the process of setting interviews very soon. Any public comment? Seeing none, I'll move back to the board. Motion to approve Elizabeth Hamilton as Interim Director of Health and Human Services. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations and good luck. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you for stepping up. Four point three, modify the allocation list for probation and collections department, probation mm -hmm. division to read one, one parentheses administrative services officer or business manager or senior financial officer effective March third, twenty twenty. Approximate cost and salary and benefits per month for an administrative op service officer at A step is six thousand forty six dollars for a business manager at A step is eight thousand three hundred nineteen dollars and for a senior financial officer at A step is nine thousand two hundred fifty five dollars. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so the probation department is requesting approval to modify their department's allocation listing uh, by including the classifications of administrative services officer and a business manager. This change would actually not add any new allocations, it's just making it more flexibly staffed and as I indicated in the staff report, it would allow for better recruitment opportunity when attempting to fill a vacancy, it would allow for growth, it would be more effective for succession planning. It also creates a career ladder within the department and enables the department to have flexible staffing. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Any public comment? No? Bring it back to the board. Motion to approve. Board by three is presented. No second. All those in support? Aye. Aye. 4.4, pursuant to Trinity County Code, section 2.60.410, from CA, authorized hiring employee 02244, as a building inspector 1 at range G187, step E, in the building department, effective March 1, 2020. Approximate cost and salary and benefits per month for a building inspector one at A step is $5,620 and at E step is $6,664. Any 
So the building department's run a recruitment for a building inspector one, which was a which is a much needed vacancy. The applicant that presented as the best candidate has two years experience as a code compliance specialist for both residential and cannabis inspections, an additional three years relative experience outside of the county, and currently possesses an ICC, which is the International Code Council Building Certificate. The classification itself, entry level, only requires two years of experience in construction work and the building trades, and only requires the ability to obtain certification as a building inspector, which this candidate already possesses. Um, based on the years of experience, the possession of the ICC, um, exceeding the minimum requirements of this position, uh, this candidate would be an asset both to the department and to our service in our community and the department's requesting the above ASAP. Questions, Bill? Back to Motion to approve board on four as presented. All those in favor, signify by aye. 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 Aye.